But, and the, what I'll say next is really important, the effort it takes to do something big is the same effort it takes to do something small. And every man that's approaching that young lady on Instagram believes he is the best she can do. Would you agree? True. Right. Hi, Anne. Hey. I was thinking of a song uh, after Anne, but there aren't any. Is there a song named after Anne? None. No man has ever sung a song with Anne in it for you. Not even Boys to Men made a song about Anne. No. Made one about Mary, made one about Gloria, but never Anne. Mm -mm. Why, why, why is this? Oh, Anne's not the, never mind. But so. She's the mother to Mary. She is the mother to? Mary. To Mary. Yes. Anne is the mother to Mary, and Mary is the mother to Jesus. I think so, yes. We got hit, we had to close one of our offices. Um, and you know what really hit us hard? Was the landlord. There's a landlord we're still paying now for an office we closed. Because of the contract. Well, because it's a five year contract and you're three years in. And the, con and the landlord goes, oh, you're closing. Ah, sorry, so when are you going to pay me? And you go, but no, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm not, I, and the landlord, is, I don't care. Gave you a contract, you're committed for this period, if you don't pay, we're gonna, and so what do you do? No one teaches you a simple thing, like when you read the lease agreement, look for the period, look for the exit clauses, no one teaches you this stuff. No one teaches you that you can take out an insurance product against certain things happening in your business, and if they do, the insurance kicks in and it covers you. No one teaches you this. No one teaches you that as the business owner and entrepreneur, you should have key man insurance. So that if you, for whatever reason, leaving here, fell ill and had to be in hospital for six months, an insurance policy kicks in that protects your business and covers your revenue line. How many of you here have key man insurance? I rest my case. No one teaches this. But everybody's teaching how to go on YouTube, how to open a Facebook page, how to create a Twitter account. Yeah, it's great to talk about the stuff that gets you to grow, but life is not always roses. Somebody has to write the book what to do when things start going wrong. When you get a letter of demand, what do you do? Do you reply or do you leave it? That's actually a question. Really, what do you do? The letter of demand comes in from, from somebody you've done business with and they send you a letter of demand saying, you owe me a million dollars and I'm giving you 14 days to pay. What do you do? Pardon? You call your lawyer? Yeah, and before the lawyer takes the call, he then says to you, uh, please sign this document, it's a mandate document, and you've got to pay $5,000 into my account as a deposit, before he even looks at the letter of demand. So now you've got a decision to make. He's sending me a letter of demand saying I owe him $10,000. To reply to the letter of demand, he's sending me an invoice to pay him $5,000 to read the letter and reply. And while this is happening, my staff is waiting for their salaries, which are 14 days due. The bank's calling me, telling me I haven't paid my credit cards in the past three months. I don't even want to go home. Because if I do, wow. Wow. So somebody, somebody one day when, when God allowing, this is the book I'd love to write. What to do when it all starts going wrong. Not if, when. Because it will. Right. So now, this brings me to uh, my main question to you. Yes, sir. Sorry, I, I had um, a soliloquy there. Yes, sir. A few years ago, you disclosed in, in, in a meeting you had, maybe in South Africa. But wait. So. I, I, I am happily married. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> And you, are you looking for option two? No, no. Oh, no yeah, no. you're fine. I'm fine. You don't want to diversify? I have enough queens in my life. All right. Yes. No, that's... that's I'm just making sure. Um, I'm protecting your interest. Thank you. So a few years ago, I, I watched you in a, in a forum you were in, and you disclosed that y your company yeah. had flagged 
the demise of uh, Nakomat yes. before yeah, it died. Yes, we about it. Yeah, it's available online. So my question is, um, do you still have an ear on the ground, specifically for our country? And now during the big elephant in the room, what should we expect in the near future uh, in our uh, socio-economic and political uh, atmospheres? Yeah, look, we flagged, we've, we, you're right, we, so we have a research team, and uh, for those of you who don't know, we have a research team that publishes research papers. Uh, admittedly, we haven't done one in a while. Uh, we've had, shall we say, post-COVID other priorities, uh, not the least of which is making sure that we are an essential service. Uh, and research, whilst fantastic, is not an essential service. So the reason I built uh, our Knowledge Bureau was it really was my contribution to, to executives in the continent running businesses. Just a, we'll make the investment, we'll publish the research, and the research freely disseminated was to enable business owners and executives to make better decisions. We, we flagged Nakumat for a couple of reasons, not the least of which is in the space of time that it's unfolded, you've seen all of them. There will be several more like this, I expect. There'll be several more like this. This is not the last one. For those of us here who work in the uh, uh, venture space, there has been a particular incident with a certain startup uh, that we all know, most valuable startup in the continent at the moment. There'll be more incidences like this, more. Um, so I can tell you these things up front. But I think that the, I'm at the stage where I'm buying. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm buying. I, I, my, my view is that asset prices are, asset prices relative to the future value of those assets right now in many countries on the continent are at the lowest they've been in a long time. So I'm buying. I can't tell you what I'm buying. Um, I can't tell you what sectors. I can't tell you what countries. But I can tell you that I've got a substantial checkbook and I'm buying. Um, so we're in that stage now where we're buying, we're acquiring, we're looking for new markets and new growth. Yes, sir. You, you nailed it. You nailed it. I think. So the, the question was, is it specifically because of the theory uh, made popular by, I want to say Charlie Munger, who's uh, Warren Buffett's partner, that um, when there's blood on the streets, it's time to buy. So you, you, the, the answer to that is yes. For me, the, the lesson I've learned being in capital markets over, over 10 years now has been be careful of buying when everybody's at the shop and go to the shop when everybody leaves. In other words, when everybody's acquiring, buying, starting new businesses, loaning new money, hold steady. Uh, you're generally at the top of a cycle. And when things begin to taper down and everybody is exiting markets, closing businesses and things are contracting, you can pick up fantastic assets at really, really great prices. Um, as long as you understand how to manage those assets and you're willing to take the long-term goal, right? Um, so at a personal level, my brother, I can tell you, I only know how to play the long-term game. So I'm a long game guy. Does that make sense? Um, I went, I did advanced valuation techniques as a course um, in 2000 and I want to say nine, long before I started our investment firm because I knew that that's what I would want to do. Right? So I, I, I try to constantly put myself in the position where I'm ahead of where people are going to be. So when they get there, that's where they find me. Yeah? So four years ago, we started doing master classes and putting them on YouTube. Nobody does this. And then two years later, COVID hits and everybody migrates there, right? So just constantly try to put myself ahead. But I think I can tell you for free that I think there, there are sectors, certainly in, in, in Kenya, the industries here where the, where the asset prices are really low, there are sectors here that are oligopolistic, dominated by a few players, which means that there is opportunity for efficiencies. 
And there are sectors here where there is a great opportunity for disruption. But, and the, what I say next is really important, the effort it takes to do something big is the same effort it takes to do something small. So for me, I'm looking for the big stuff. I'm, I'm looking for the big stuff, like, you know, $100 million or more type of big stuff. That's the, that's the stuff that, I, that wakes me up in the morning. I go, this is a, an interesting opportunity for us to look at. Um, yeah. Good yeah. afternoon, everybody. My name is Anne Gogi of Glam Interiors, where anything wood is our business. We are in the business of manufacturing furniture and fixtures and fittings. Now, I have two questions. Uh, the first one, there is where you had mentioned about uh, moving from realm of attention to realm of consideration. So I'm stuck there for quite some time. I think uh, half a decade now, I've been pushing to get into a certain market. And um, I know I have really tried my best, but um, up to now, getting into that market has been a problem. I've gone to an extent of meeting the chairman himself, and he's just shut me down. So I would why? advise, why? Why? they said they don't need me in the market, but in their market, they have my products. They, don't, they have someone with similar products to what I do. Yes. Yeah, so I decided I was advised to go start from underneath. So I start from the people down there as I progress upwards. So I have tried that, I'm stuck there. So this guy has been giving me promises after promises, and it's been five years now. And I know that I still need to get to that market. So how would you advise someone? How so do I get to question? that realm of consideration? What is the question? Realm of consideration. Yes. Maybe let me ask the question. So, like I'm a six-year-old, explain what is your question. Okay. My question is, I need to get into that market. How do I get, how do I tap into that market? Which market? Um, okay, let me start from, I was one of the, uh, I used to, my products were in Uchumi supermarkets. So I was the leading seller of home, um, locally made furniture, quality to be specific. Good. Yes, and uh, we did so well while we were in that market. Apparently, we had- Do you guys know her product? Coming. Hands up if you know her product. Glam Interiors. What's the name of the brand? Glam Interiors. Glam Interiors. Yes. Hands up if you know it. Hello, family. The VT Masterclass has now reached over 5 million unique entrepreneurs all across the world. If you'd like to book me for one, make sure that you hit the link below. Cheers. Hands up if you've, if you've never heard of it. Okay, carry on. Okay, so, <laughs> um, so we've been in that market for quite some time. Yes. We had not seen it coming that uh, Utumi at some point will come to close down. Yes. So they closed down and they closed down with a lot of our money and assets. Yes, and yes, all, yes, yeah? yes, yes. They had just stock so and consignment. Now, they were yes. owing you money for product and they didn't exactly, pay. Exactly. Yes. Yes. I so understand. now uh, we saw similar to Utumi. Yes, we've learned, but now we are going knowing that this is a bigger brand and better. So we want to tap into that brand. Yes. So we want our products there. Yeah. You're asking the wrong question. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you, so this company that you are talking to that's telling you no, yeah? Don't take the mic from her yet. This company that you're talking to that's telling you no, yes. how many companies like yourself do you think talk to that company on a daily basis? Many. Sorry? Many. Many. I didn't hear you? Many. One more time? <laughs> many. Many, many, many. So this company would be likened to the young lady on Instagram who's getting a thousand DMs. Would you agree? True. And every man that's approaching that young lady on Instagram believes he is the best she can do. Would you agree? True. Right. So the question for you is, how do you get them to see you differently? 
The answer is in the question I asked earlier. Hands up if you've heard of her product or her brand. Hands up, please. If you've heard of her product or her brand, put your hand up nice and high for me. Nice and high. L let me do it differently. Stand up if you've heard of her product or brand. Would you stand up for me, please? All right. All right. Now stand up if you've never heard of her product or brand. Ma'am, would you come up here, please? Come up here. Oh, say can't. Remain standing, if you would, for me. Like a Roman Catholic church. Right. Stage is yours, ma'am. Your name again? Anne Gogi. Say again? Anne Gogi. Anne. Yes. Anne. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Anne. And Hello, the, everyone. And for the next 30 seconds, Anne is going to tell you all about her business and more specifically, why leaving this room, you need to go to? Glam Interiors. Glam Interiors and go in and request that they stock her product. So Glam Interiors is your business? Yes. Which is the business that you want them to stock your product? Name them. Naiva Supermarket. Say again? Naiva Supermarket. Right. So here's what we're gonna do after this meeting. You're gonna get us the email of the buyer at Naiva Supermarket. Sure. Patrick and the team at SME Link will take that email and share it with everyone in this room. And over the next seven days, every person in this room is going to send two emails, just two in seven days, to Naiva Interior asking them do they stock Glam Interior products. Sure. Will that help you? A lot. Right. Big deal. Right. Now, now, for 30 seconds, please tell them what makes your products so amazing. 30 seconds starts now. Uh, my products are amazing because we make our products from hardwood. That is mahogany. What is mahogany? mahogany? Yeah, 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 yeah. Come, come to me. Come. <laughs> Hi, Anne. Hi. I was thinking of a song uh, after Anne, but there aren't any. Is there a song named after Anne? None. No man has ever sung a song with Anne in it for you. Not even Boys to Men made a song about Anne. No. I made one about Mary, I made one about Gloria, but never Anne. Mm -mm. Why, why is this? Oh, Anne's not the, never mind. But, so. She's the mother to Mary. She is the mother to? Mary. To Mary. Yes. Anne is the mother to Mary, and yes. Mary is the mother to Jesus. I think so, yes. Is that, is that a fact? Yes. Right, okay. Well, well, congratulations. <laughs> um, now Anne. First, I'm sorry, you may sit, you may sit, right, right. right. <laughs> so Anne, yes. I'm asking you to pitch to these fine people your product. In this room here today, what would you imagine is the purchasing power of everybody here? Let's imagine everybody here in the next three months will have $1,000 discretionary that they can spend on your product. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. There's over 50 people in this room, close on 60, which means in front of you right now, you have potentially $60,000 wow. in new income. Right. I proclaim it, yes. We, absolutely. So Anne, yes. tip number one, when you're pitching your business, never talk about the product. Talk about the problem that you're solving. No one cares what product you make. No one cares. So when you started Glam Interiors, what was missing in the market? What was the problem you were solving that you felt Glam Interiors could solve? Quality furniture that will last you a lifetime. Slowly. Quality furniture yes. that will last you? A lifetime. Why would I want my furniture to last a lifetime? Because uh, next to a home, the, next, the second most expensive thing in a home is furniture. Okay, so it's a little bit about cost saving. Yes. Any other reason why I would want my furniture to last a lifetime? I mean, furniture, the, the design gets dated after a while. I want to get new stuff. Why would I want it to last a lifetime? Um, with what I do, the furniture that I produce, um, it will not, the, the design, it's more of antique. So design Thank will you. be there Thank years, you. Whoa, years whoa, whoa, to come. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. So Anne thinks she makes quality furniture that's going to last you a lifetime. Anne is wrong. What Anne actually does 
is she makes timeless pieces of craftsmanship that you can exhibit in your home as a member of the Glam Interiors community. Mm -hmm. Hands up if you're buying that. Right. So Anne, first in your language, yes. never ever say, last you a lifetime. Okay. Rather say, timeless. See, timeless means if I had it 10 years ago, it was cool. If I have it 10 years from now, it's still cool. Still cool, right? Okay. So timeless. Mm -hmm. The second is you spoke about saving money. Yes. Because you don't want to spend money on this stuff, right? Now, do you think your customers care about money? Uh, yes, that's very important. Is it? Yes, money is a very major factor, and saving is important as well. No, 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 mm -hmm. no, Chief, no. Mm -hmm. No, comrade. No. Mm -hmm. um, see, when I'm buying something that's timeless, mm -hmm. it's not uppermost in my mind saving money. If I want to save money, I buy whole wheat bread, not white bread. If I want to save money, I don't drive during peak hour traffic in Nairobi. Right? Sure. There are things I can do if I want to save money. Which means if you're talking to me about buying your product, saving money is not top of mind for me. I think. Mm -hmm. Let's test this. We have a sample case. Ladies, you guys felt very strongly about this. So if you were buying Glam Interior stuff, are you buying it because you're saving money? No. Why would you buy it? Exactly. Say that again, say it louder. You want people to see a unique item in my house. Hello, family. The VT Masterclass has now reached over 5 million unique entrepreneurs all across the world. If you'd like to book me for one, make sure that you hit the link below. Cheers.